Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we return to the land of serendipity. Today's entry is Knitter Pitter, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Vanity can cost you friends. It's interesting that that's definitely one of the illustrators before, but to me the cover feels different than it has been. I can't quite put my finger on it, but maybe it's because the colors are a bit darker and richer to me. Yes, it's the same illustrator. It's always Robin James. It's Stephen and Robin all the time with the exception of Butterwings. I think that's the only exception. Dedicated to a horse named Black-Eyed Pete, who saw his shadow one day and liked it. Stephen. Hmm. wonder if that dedication is where some people got the idea that Knitter Pitter was Black-Eyed Pete. Or that Knitter Pitter was Glitterby's father. In a burst of sunrise wonder, dawn was born of another day in the meadows of your mind. There were birds of all sorts singing and winging in the early light, and all the other animals that lived in the meadow began the day by blinking the mist of morning from their eyes. No, oh, there's some nice cute little birds in there. They're facing away from us right now. Everyone's facing away from us, including the deer. I was going to get to that. I just wanted to finish describing the birds first. They're a nice blue tint, and they have, like, pink underbelly feathers with their tail. And, and the art is very detailed this time. Like, there are details in the way the leaves look, and the branches, and the grass, and the ferns. And the animals are lightly detailed, but there's definitely lots of good line work going on here. The early hush of dawn was broken by the rush of a herd of horses as they raced into the meadow to graze and frolic the day away. There were paints, roans, blacks and bays, horses of every color. The young ones kicked and bucked while the older horses quietly munched the lush green grass of the meadow. Once again, plenty of detail, and that's a lot of horses of a lot of different color on this little baby one in the background. You can tell because it's all skinny. There's another one. Thank you for pointing out all three. <laughs> a light brown, kind of a grayish blue, and another kind of grayish blue one. And there's just all the different patterns you see on horses. The background is really nice. The trees are like are almost photorealistic in this compared to the grass and the animals. I'm not saying the animals look bad. They look very well rendered. The horses stayed close together as the day wore on. All the horses, that is, except one beautiful stallion called Knitter Pitter. Pitter never played with the other horses, since he knew they wouldn't play with him because he was so pretty. He was content to stand on the bluff that overlooked the meadow and watch the antics of the herd below. Vain much? Yeah. And speaking of which, he is a very pretty horse. They actually render the shine on a horse's coat in this shot and on the mane and he is just the pretty boy of horses and unfortunately it seems like he knows it yeah silly horses he neighed all they do the whole day through is play and eat play and eat i'd never do that silliness i'm too beautiful to play with that herd of horses with that, he wandered farther up the bluff to a special place where the sun hit him just so. Then, if he looked very carefully, he could see his magnificent shadow cast upon the ground. Is it just me, or did the scene from Gravity Falls where the unicorn goes, I have to stand in front of a waterfall now, pop into your head? No. I was thinking of when Pacha goes, when the sun hits just right. Uh... Because that just, like, the way you were describing it was the horse, like, I have to go and stand in front of a beautiful waterfall now with a rainbow, nonetheless. Yeah, Knitter Pitter and Arabella could probably give each other some lessons in vanity. Yeah, and once again, very nicely rendered, good muscle tone, and dang, is he shiny. Mm-hmm. The clouds are a little simplistic, though. Compared to what we've seen this illustrator do before, they are more basic, but they're not really the focus. Yeah, like, I was thinking, she's probably keeping the clouds very simple to help keep the focus on the horse, because the clouds are taking up the majority of the upper part of the frame. There were times when Knitter Pitter would grow tired of looking at his shadow, 
and would seek other ways to see himself. Ooh. Almost every day, he would rub his soft, silky coat against a rock until it became so shiny that he could see his own reflection. But his favorite of pastimes was to stand near the pond at the end of the meadow and gaze for hours at his mirrored image of beauty on the water. Yes, thank you, Narcissus. Occasionally, the other horses of the herd would stray close to Pitter, but they would ignore him because he was stuck up and he would just put his nose in the air as if they weren't even there. Dang! You're just like, whoa! Once again, nicely rendered art. Though, double checking the reflection. Yeah, it's accurate. It looked a little off near one of the legs. No, she's got it nailed. Yep. Though, depending on the time, it's actually pretty easy to create that type of reflection. Hmm. Let's go backwards. Really? In 1978? There's also techniques in physical art where you can easily copy your sketch from above and flip it down below. Which may be what she did. One warm summer day, as Pitter was, as usual, gazing at himself in the water, a friskier than usual colt forgot to look where he was going and quite by accident bumped into the beautiful knitter Pitter, knocking him into the pond. He looked so silly sitting there with a lily pad draped over one ear that the other horses just whinnied and whinnied and stomped their feet in laughter. I don't know, I think he looks kind of cute. He does look kind of cute. And so far, this book nails the art very well. And as Ember just stated, yeah, he actually looks kind of cute. He looks kind of sad, too. He's going, my beautiful main style, my beautiful... God, it's this water sanitary. Shh. This is just totally going to ruin my coat complexion. And there's the very energetic, what was it, Colt? Yes. In the background. Running off and two horses that are probably laughing. One of them has one of their forelegs lifted. With a lurch and a leap, Pitter jumped from the water as the other horses ran back to the pasture land below. Dumb old horses, he thought as he tried to shake himself dry. They shouldn't laugh at me. Why, I'm the most beautiful horse they've ever seen. He sulked around in the sunshine as he tried to get dry, but he was so wet that the water clung to him as if he were a sponge. So with a oomph, he lay down in the sand at the edge of the pond and rolled and rolled until he was dry. Interesting. Though that's a nice illustration of a horse rolling around in the dirt. I've never actually seen that myself. You haven't? Oh, I... Not on television. Yeah, I have been around real horses in real life, but not as often. It was mostly just riding them, so. And apparently mine was less time riding and more time observing, because I've seen this. Mm. And that's pretty dang accurate. <laughs> and it's a nice drawing. Once again, more of the detail focused on Knitter Pitter than anything else. Though the grass has a nice texture to it. Mm -hmm. And you can still see the edge of the water, so where it's saying he's on the verge, he is. Ah, oh, that's much better, he said as he trotted around for a moment or two. Then he decided he would have one more look at himself in the pond, before he went back to the bluff that overlooked the meadow. As he bent over the water, he was shocked to see a scraggly, mud-soaked pony where the magnificent horse used to be. He couldn't believe his eyes, so he looked again, and sure enough, Knitter Pitter had been transformed with a dash of mud here and there into a run-of-the-mill horse with a lily pad hanging from one ear. How did that last through the rolling? And yeah, it wasn't rendered in the last image either. What am I going to do? He cried. My favorite thing in all the world was to look at me, and now there's nothing to see because I don't want to look at me. With that, he hid sadly beneath the tree and sighed and sighed. He does look kind of down. And there's more detail in the shot other than Knitter Pitter. Some of the focus has been put on the little tree he's hiding under and the background again, especially with the forest. Well, if I recall, there might be something in the tree on the next page. 
Pitter would have been beneath that tree to this very day if it had not been for a large black raven who landed on a branch right above his head. Hi, horse, said the raven as he settled his wings about him. What you doing? <laughs> I love the way you're doing that voice. What does it look like I'm doing? said Pitter with a pout. I'm hiding because I used to be the most beautiful horse and now I'm just as ugly as can be. Well, croaked the raven, it seems to me that you look just as normal as can be. <laughs> muttered Pitter. A lot you know. I used to be so magnificent that the other horses wouldn't even play with me. And now that I'm ugly, I have nothing to do but hide beneath this tree. Okay. First world problems? <laughs> Thank you, Weird Al. I can't get Wi-Fi in the kitchen. <laughs> the thread count in these sheets has got me itching. Ah, now on to the art of the page. A very sad horse. And a raven going, hello. And Knitter Pitter doesn't actually look that bad. No, but when you are the world's most magnificent horse. Yes, Starlight, could you be a little more full of yourself? <laughs> ah, my brain just caught up with me. Rainbow Bright, please, for the love of God, someone properly license that from Hallmark. Back to the art. I like how they use the tree to frame the horse's head and indicate with the branch where to look for the bird. Ah, they like upped the contrast and added a little bit more mane to the cover for this image that's just popped up. More mane. <laughs> Needs more mane. Yep. You can go see our most viewed video <laughs> to get that reference. Hair extensions! For every pony! The raven thought for a moment or two, then caught a little cough and said, I'll bet you that if you went right now and tried to play with the other horses, they wouldn't even know who you are and probably wouldn't care. Then you wouldn't have to hide anymore. Pitter looked at the raven and molded around in his mind and then decided to give it a try. Oh, I like the expression on the horse. He's like, oh, he's like, he's thinking about it. And the raven's just kind of talking along and the horse is now more prominent. We got nice detail on the face. We even have the veins that you can see underneath the fur. And the leaves are a little less detailed than they were in the other shots. And they're now behind Nitter Pitter in most of the cases. Yeah, let's see how they've added little details to the leaves here, but they're more open here. Mm. Yeah, that also illustrates that he's lifted his head back up. Mm-hmm. Because before the raven was above him. And you can see he's actually also come closer to the raven because this branch that he's under is now behind him. Mm-hmm. He shyly ambled out into the meadow, and at first... The other horses just ignored him. Knitter Pitter was about to give up when one of the horses dashed by him, nipped him on the shoulder, and shouted, Tag, you're it! Pitter was so shocked at being invited to play that he just stood there for a moment. Then, with a whinny, he set out at a gallop to tag another horse. I actually like the design of the other horse there, though it may be because his mane is kind of fluffed up because he's running, but it looks like he has an awesome mohawk. Mm hmm Kind of looks like when it, like they were trying to make him kind of an energetic teenagerish pony horse. Once again, the author uses pony and horse interchangeably. Mm-hmm. And it appears to stand there going, Oh, what? Though I would have given a little bit more contrast between Nitter Pitter and the other horse because their browns kind of work too well with each other and they kind of blend together as the other horse is running behind Nitter Pitter. Oh, uh, the horse that tagged him is a lighter brown. Knitter Pitter has more red in his brown. Also, it's a nice contrast of, yeah, Knitter Pitter, you're really just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that I would have done something like shading or something to make his body and head stand out more. But overall, once again, the artist is amazing. I can't draw horses like this, so I'm just talking about what I do know about art. That day was the most fun that Pitter had ever had in his entire life. Poor guy. He learned how to play hide and seek and buck and run and so many other games that were just plain fun. Ah, those 
author usually doesn't rhyme, <laughs> except at the ending couplets. I was not expecting that. Sometimes, just for the pure joy of it, Knitter Pitter would kick at a butterfly or reach for the sun. Pretty sure I remember Morgan doing the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, that is a very energetic Knitter Pitter, who looks quite happy. Mm-hmm. Also looks like he has all four hooves off the ground. Just in the middle of a gallop. Mm -hmm. Because all of their feet do leave the ground, which was a question for a while until we emitted motion pictures and went, oh. Well, that was kind of the start of motion pictures was they had the strings out to trigger the cameras and they galloped a horse across it to take the photos to see if all the hooves ever did leave the ground. And then when they flipped through them, they went, hey, look at this. It kind of looks like it's moving. Mm hmm. Dang, the muscle tone. Very well drawn. Very well rendered. Even after the rains had washed the mud away, making him beautiful again, and amidst all the fun and frolic, Knitter Pitter forgot that he was prettier than all the other horses and remembered, most importantly, that he was just a horse. <laughs> a very nice looking horse, but just a horse all the same. And once again, he's all shiny. Very well rendered shininess. The background is kept simple. The clouds and sky are very nicely done, but more detailed than they were before. But it's detailed in such a way that it's giving contrast to Nidderpitter's head against the background. Mm -hmm. When you look into the mirror in the meadows of your mind, remember Nidderpitter and the lesson he had to find. Hmm. And a lovely image of Nidderpitter looking at us looking happy and just very nicely done nice streaky clouds yep ears swiveled towards us kind of a 45 degree angle nice detail on the face the head and muzzle um like i said i'm used to the ending couplets rhyming i'm not used to stephen rhyming in the middle of the book mm -hmm. and speaking of the book what are your thoughts now well, since it says after we watch Campfire Tales, it reminds me a tiny bit of Rarity's story of beauty isn't everything. Mm. Because if you notice, the horses continued to play with him after he regained his looks. So it wasn't the fact that he was beautiful that was keeping him separate from the other ponies. It was the fact that he was a narcissistic jerk and thought he was better than everyone else. People can have specialties and be good at different things or, you know, have things that others admire, but kind of like, was it Boastbusters the first time Trixie showed up? There's a difference between being good at something or having something and being a jerk about it. Mm hmm So, yeah. I mean, it's nice, you know, these books all have lessons but almost all the ones that I got when I was a kid therefore pretty much all the ones in my collection was basically because they either had a horse a pegasus or a unicorn so I don't think my mom ever picked these for their lessons I think we were looking is there a horse is there a pegasus is there a unicorn ah and this has been Knitter Pitter written by Stephen Cosgrove illustrated by Robin James thank you for listening if you enjoyed this, we have a whole playlist of the serendipity books that we've gone through so far. If you want to check out different items, you can check out other playlists, both in Ember's Reading Room and on our main channel. Lots of stuff. We've been at this a while. Even Ember's Reading Room. I, are we going to be like coming up on an anniversary soon? <laughs> it feels like it. Would you like to get a copy of this book for yourself? Look below for an Amazon link. If it's in print, we will try to provide one. Feel like going shopping? You just had a relaxing read. You know, some entertaining, we hope, commentary. Maybe you'd like to go shopping. Check out the Ebates link and sign up and get cash back for stores that you probably shop at anyways. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Well, and don't say stuff I want to comment back on right when we start the recording. <laughs> also, that's a lovely chocolate mustache that you have going there. Yes, the finest chocolate mustache.
Hershey's dark chocolate. Unsweetened, no less. It's very tasty. 